Hi, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading, and this is a five mile review, or about a five mile review, of the South Union Mills Colonial Buckle Shoes. Last year, as I mentioned in the first 18th century trekking gear uh, video that we published, I mentioned that I wanted to find and I wanted to get better about my gear, about its prominence in history, and about understanding what our forefathers went through to do the things that they did in building a country. And one of those things is doing it in 18th century footwear. And I think just as a precursor to all of this, when we think about the founding of the United States, it's really kind of incredible what happened. Um, it was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to make that happen. And when we consider, not making light of it at all, but when we consider they were doing it in 18th century footwear, really, <laughs> for me, that makes it all the more meaningful. And let me explain to you why I say that. Footwear today in the 21st century is really incredible. Every single day before I leave my house, I am wearing a supported sole, waterproof leather boot that I can go out and stand on my feet all day in and I don't feel anything. It obviously feels good to take them off when I get home at the end of the day, but I can go through and hike 10 or 15 miles in those boots and not, not care at all. When we go back 200 years to the 18th century and the late 18th century, they didn't have that at all. You have methods to waterproof certain kinds of shoes, certain kind of footwear, like 18th century moccasins, like we see uh, out of Nathaniel Kobuck's research. But in large part, according to what I've read, most people, especially townspeople at the time, were wearing a shoe similar to this. This is the Colonial Buckle shoe from South Union Mills, and I have a little bit over five miles in these shoes on a variety of terrains here. When we think about and when you understand something as simple as the footwear that those people were wearing, doing what they did and just making a homestead in a pair of shoes like this is really incredible. And after wearing these for over five miles, I have a newfound respect for that, for my ancestors and for everybody's ancestors that lived through the 18th century and got us to where we are today. So flashback to the end of 2022, I was interested in and wanted to upgrade some of my equipment over the winter season to prepare for the 2023 reenactment event season. And one of those things was investing in a good pair of period footwear. Now, South Union Mills is a, a company out of the American South, I believe down in Tennessee, and largely across the board when I was asking folks, uh, they recommended the South Union Mills shoe as kind of an introductory, intermediate level of colonial shoe to get into, both for historical accuracy as well as just durability and longevity out of the shoe. There are other shoes out there, uh, Townsend's and Samson Historical come to mind, and I believe A Second Chance at History now offers a pair of shoes, as well as Daniel Boone of Kentucky. I just went with South Union Mills because that's what was recommended to me. No shade or anything to the other manufacturers out there. I ordered the shoes in November, which is a busy time for any business, especially here in the United States with Christmas right around the corner. But the shoes ship within two weeks and I got them in great condition. When they came in, they were a nice solid black. They did not come with a buckle, but they did come with a set of laces. So while I do have a buckle on each shoe here from Townsend's, you have right out the box the ability to set up and tie these shoes at no extra cost. And really, depending on your persona, tying the shoes is going to be more accurate than the buckle, especially if you're kind of on the lower class end with your persona. I wanted to go with the buckle because we see them a lot in period paintings and illustrations, and I felt that it matched a little bit more with what I wanted to do. Sizing can be difficult when it comes to period footwear because there isn't the variety um, of when it comes to period footwear as there is with modern footwear. The South Union Mills, I believe, recommends ordering a size under your shoe. And I have like double E wide feet here. Uh, and I, that was my main concern. I reached out to South Union Mills and Chris got back with me and said to order uh, just still order the one size down because they do run wide. And I have to say, after the five plus miles in these, they do run wide. I ordered a size down basically from my shoe, and I feel like I could have almost gone another size down. But I like where these shoes are at being a little bit big because in the winter months, 
I can throw on an extra thick wool sock with these. Now, that's gonna vary depending on the size of your feet. And I encourage you to talk to South Union Mills and talk to other people with the shoes, really. And this goes for any manufacturer to get a better understanding of the shoe sizes and things. But as somebody with large, wide feet, going down to the 10 was not an issue at all for me. Um, and even right now, they rattle just a little bit on my bare feet, but it's not a detrimental rattle. And even trekking and going through the woods here and the brush, it's not enough to ever introduce a blister yet. So I imagine that that could happen on some longer extended trips, possibly with these shoes. But right now I've not noticed any wear and tear on my feet. Talking a little bit about where I've taken these shoes in the five miles and or a little bit over five miles that I've had them. I've had them in the woods. I've had them in the garden. I've cleaned the barn with them. I've done yard work with them. And I've been at an indoor event at the Kalamazoo Living History Show with them. Now, primarily when you see these shoes and, and you read about colonial shoes online, one of the first things that people say is there's no tread. And that's true. As they come, they are smooth, flat leather on the underside. Um, depending on who you purchase your shoes from, there's going to be nails and, and a little bit of a uh, possibly a heel plate back here to help give you a little extra traction. This is a, a plain leather sole here from South Union Mills, and it has a series of nails here at the end of our heel plate. And as you can see here a little bit on this shoe, after taking it around, especially being outdoors, for as long as I've had these, I'm starting to get a little bit of wear and a little bit of grip on here. Now, I'm not gonna go running down a freshly dewed hill <laughs> in these shoes. Uh, I totally expect to wipe out in that event. And even on my winter trekking trip that I went on here, um, I slipped a little bit in the snow and the ice on these, but it's nothing that I don't think detracts from the shoe. It's the kind of thing that those people dealt with. It's the kind of thing that they worked through to uh, really build a country and build a life for families and their future ancestors here. Now, when we think about these shoes and we think about their use in the 18th century, I'm not a shoe expert. This is just kind of me thinking about all of this stuff, but they, in the 18th century, did not have the hardness of materials that we have today. They did not necessarily have concrete. They didn't have really just mainly concrete here. Um, so in, these shoes work great on natural materials, on dirt, on stone, in the woods. Really, as long as you are careful and really uh, practiced in moving through the woods, regardless of your footwear, I think you're gonna be fine. The only terrain that I would steer clear of wearing an 18th century shoe like this one without any modern uh, amends here to give it a tread would be concrete. I was at an indoor show wearing these shoes, took a little bit of a sharp turn going around a corner and I slipped and had a nice bruise on my bottom. Uh, my friend Jason Gatliff reminded me many times that he doesn't wear colonial shoes inside just for that reason. So I appreciate that coming from him, but I'm passing that along to you to maybe save your bottoms here a little bit. Uh, as great and as fun as it is to spend some time, especially at an indoor event, in full period kit. Um, you know, it might be that kind of thing to, to adjust and put some tread or some sticky on the bottom of your shoes or have a separate pair, uh, you know, of some more modern shoes that lean to the traditional side, depending on the caliber of event that you're at. I just want to make mention of that because um, I needed to learn it for myself, I guess, and I learned a little bit the hard way. <laughs> So far in my experience, really, in, in putting five plus miles on these shoes through wet terrain, through dry terrain, through snow, through mud, um, I'm really pleased with how they've worn. They've got a good patina on them now. Um, I think they're probably due for an oiling uh, just to keep the leather a little bit hydrated, uh, to keep those fibers together. But I'm really pleased with how they've broken in and, and how well they've functioned for me. You can see here, I've got uh, a little bit of a, the trimmed off the tongue here, or, or off the strap, I should say, to accommodate this buckle. I didn't like this strap out here flopping around. Uh, as they come from the store, the strap comes down all the way uh, just about to the, to the bottom sole there. Um, so I just trimmed it there so it didn't get caught. It didn't wear out on anything. 
Like I said, I'm wearing, uh, I think, the basic economy buckle from Townsend's here. And you can see uh, through the kind of miles that we've taken these shoes through, we're getting a nice used patina on here. Traditionally, from what I've seen in, in the folks that I've talked to, the shoe buckles are really the valuable part of the shoe. Um, and you can attribute that to metal and things being a little more scarce in the 18th century than they are today. Um, so I think depending on the class that you're going for and the person that you're portraying, uh, the, you're, there are varying degrees of buckles out there for your shoes. But for right now, I'm breaking these in and getting an understanding of how this footwear works with kind of the economy buckle has worked really well for me. In wearing these shoes, I've worn them with socks, I've worn them with no socks, and I've worn them with leggings here. And I have to say, the leggings really add a lot of utility to these shoes. When you're going through less than favorable terrain, like snow especially here, uh, having something to keep all the natural elements really out of your shoes is a big blessing uh, when it comes to wearing 18th century shoes like this. It's not a fault of the South Union Mill shoes, it's just how these shoes and the design of them work. So if you're wanting to go and, and go through the woods and, and go through the snow, much like we see in the 18th century, I do recommend some kind of legging that goes over these shoes to protect your foot a little bit. I got good experience and, and I had a good experience really wearing a thick wool sock because nothing was able to get into the shoe because the socks were so thick. But I think on a warm summer day like this, here today, the leggings that go over the shoes are going to keep any bugs or poison ivy off my ankles, which is a big plus in my books. I hope this was useful and informative for you, just kind of getting a look at these shoes after a little over five miles, probably five to seven really. I haven't been keeping great track, uh, but I'm, I'm hopeful to bring you along and kind of show you how these shoes perform and how they degrade really with use over time here. Uh, I'm looking to kind of do it in five mile or so increments just to get an idea of what these shoes can go through, um, going through real life activities. Now, when it comes to 18th century clothing and gear and equipment, I want to make a note that they did clean their clothes. They did have new items and they did take care of the items they had. Um, there's a notion in the contemporary community that and I do it myself, where you want something to look used, you want it to look comfortable, and you want it to be worn. Um, and I think for me, part of that is to better understand. I, I know that because these shoes look as good as they do, I have experienced them the way that they would have been experienced in the 18th century. And that's what I, I, I'm happy about. And I've enjoyed wearing these for the past five or so miles. But in that sense, if you have shoes that are new, and if you have clothing that's new, that's okay. You know, you don't need to go through and wear stuff out. Really, after I go through and beat these um, and, and go through and probably wear them out, I will keep them as that kind of level of wear on the shoes. But I think it does warrant, and I think these shoes do warrant kind of having a second pair as a backup just in case. And that's something that we see in a lot of the documentation for shoes, um, especially people out on the frontier. They would have a pair of shoes that they wore one day and then they would swap the shoes would get dried out, dried out, or they'd switch them with a pair of moccasins, and they'd switch socks, you know, to prevent that kind of trench foot that we hear so much about. And I think that's kind of something that you can take even into the 21st century here, depending on how hard you want to wear your shoes. Um, overall, really, I'm very pleased with these shoes so far. I think at this point, I've really gotten my money's worth out of these shoes, and I would absolutely buy them again. Um, at the price they are now and, and a little bit more just because of, of how much they've worked well for me. Um, like I said, I'm going to be going through and, and doing some things to take care of them, put a little bit back into the shoes here as we head into the summer here. But um, I think it's a good buy. This is not sponsored. It doesn't, nobody knows that I'm making this, um, but I just wanted to kind of give you some of my experience that I've had with these shoes and with the vendor that makes them here um, to pass a little bit on some of the knowledge that I've, that's been shared with me and, and recommended a little bit to more people. So once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me at ilovemuzzleloading at gmail.com or you can leave a comment on this video. The comments are nice because other people can see your question and can see my answer to it. But I understand if you want a more private answer to your question, you can shoot me an email at ilovemuzzleloading at gmail.com. Uh, some up close photos of the shoes kind of from start to finish through their uh, use here at ilovemuzzleloading.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.